Jesus tells us how he cares for sparrows. He then goes on to say, you are worth more than many sparrows. And that's not just the 12 apostles he's talking to. He's talking to you out there. All of us are worth so much to him, he can't wait to put his grace into our lives and to transform us. And during this shutdown, I haven't just been working on an old car, we've also been working on the vision of the parish. We have been thinking, we have been praying, what have we done with the merger? What have we failed to do? How far have we come? Where exactly are we going with our parish work? We, as I said, we've been thinking, praying, and discerning about what our parish should be doing, what the new things should we be doing, and what should we be doing better to help transform these people to allow God's grace to work his magic inside of everyone. And now it's time for a little show and tell, we might say. Why? It's a good time to do it, as we're on video. Why? Because due to the great video recording of Tom Shannon here in Siouxland Videos, it's easy to show a chart, right, when we have this editing skills of the great Tom Shannon. So anyway, what we started with here is figure one, and figure one shows what the parishes looked like before the merger. And you see you have two functional parishes all right there, Immaculate Conception and Nativity two pastors, two secretaries, a deacon on each side, and so forth, and that's the way that the parish was functioning then. However, uh, figure two goes on to show after the merger what it looked like. So notice with figure two here, we now have one entity, one parish. We still have two priests. However, one is a pastor and one is the associate. Uh, in fact, for the first year, we only had a part-time associate with Father Brad, as he had duties at the diocese, and in fact, we still only have a part-time associate because Father Andrew has the duties of the director of liturgy down at the diocese, and some of his time is spent down there. But as we looked at this whole thing, we noticed that the administration of the pastor had doubled. Father Armand and Father Steve both had a certain amount of administration to do as pastors of the two individual parishes, and when we merged them together, that all fell on the back of one pastor. So the administration doubled, and knowing that those guys weren't sitting around doing nothing all day, that means the time for ministry has went down. But the number of parishioners has doubled. So you've doubled the number of parishioners and reduced the amount of time that, that the priest had for ministry. This is, of course, backwards. It needs to be the other way, right? If you're gonna have more people, you need to have more time for ministry. And we always said that we did this merger not to do less, but to do more, and that's exactly what we did. During that first year, we tried to expand as much as we could. More education, more prayer opportunities, more social opportunities, the best we could possibly do to make it work. And it actually did work quite well, our collection went up compared to what the two parishes did individually the year before if you add them together. By the way, we're the only one of the three mergers in Sioux City that had that happen, so something really good happened. In the next year, we wanted to continue the expansion, and we did the best that we could, but we noticed that we stumbled. Why did we stumble? Well, the problem was, is the administration was getting into the way. There just didn't seem to be enough hours in the day for us to get it done. Every time we tried to do something, something would go wrong. We would sit down and start to think about, well, maybe we can expand this. The dishwasher would break, the furnace would break, something would get in the way, things that had to be done if we were gonna have church on Sunday. So it was hard to do more ministry. There was too much non-ministry that had to be done. The structure was bringing us down. That's what happened to us. Every time we tried to do more, something got in the way. And that's when we started to realize we need to talk about structure. The structure of the parish, by that I mean what, who's doing which jobs and how should a parish of 2,500 families be laid out. So we started studying these structures in Omaha, Des Moines, and Sioux Falls for parishes approximately our size. It's difficult to know how many families they have because most places just don't put that on their website. And what we found out was they had more staff than us and in fact, they all pretty much had business managers, other people doing ministry beyond just the priests. They had a full staff, and you could see it in their activities and their bulletin. It was a much tamer situation. So we went out and hired a business manager, and it just so happened our own deacon, Dennis Brockhouse, 
he decided that he would like to maybe take that job, so we hired him, and I'm telling you, it's been absolutely amazing. Not only is he there to supervise those things, he can do a lot of them, because he's got these great skills, he's saving us all kinds of money, not to mention he's freeing up time in my, my schedule so that I can do other things, so I can concentrate on what I was actually trained to do, not fixing furnaces and repairing concrete, but instead doing ministry and not coordinating these, these other non-ministerial events. So we've been working then on this new flow chart. What does our parish look like and how do we want it to look in the future? And we've made some changes. And that is figure three right here. And uh, we, we're gonna be talking about that real soon here. And you can notice that we have Deacon Dennis over there as the business, business manager. And he uh, has the orange color. The orange colors are the ones, things that we've been adding as new positions. You'll notice Abigail Boone, our youth ministry is in there. Uh, we now have Mary Lair moved to parish life director and Sam Hacker has taken on publicity. You might notice we do quite well with our publicity on TV and, and radio and so forth, and she does an excellent job with that. So that is the orange color, things that we've added since the merger happened. And then the blue color is the things that always existed. The faith formation program, uh, our secretaries, our bookkeeper, all of these kind of positions, including our good liturgy director, Lori Helen, as well as our choir director, Chris Miller, and so forth. These are all in the blue, and then the black is the pastors, the priests, they've always existed there too. But what we really wanna concentrate on is the green stuff, and that is the mission, right? All of these buildings, all of this structure, the business manager, the, all this stuff exists so that we can do mission, so we can spread the gospel of Christ, right? That's the purpose of this parish. That's why it was founded. And so many years later, that's exactly what we're trying to do. And during this discernment time, we've been thinking about a lot about what should we be doing more of and who are we leaving out? And we realize as we look at society with all the difficulties that are out there, we're leaving a lot of people out that could really use our help and our support. And you'll notice in the green, we have many areas. By no means is this an exhaustive list. We ran the space in the paper. There's more to put in there, but we can only get so big of a piece of paper. But what are we talking about expanding into? Well, we have some areas such as new, uh, newlyweds. How about young adults? How about young families? And how about single parents? It's pretty tough to be a single parent out there. What about those who have went through a divorce? And not only that, what about those that are widows and widowers? It's a tough life when these kind of things happen in your lives. And we have people in our parish that have experienced all of these things. And we should have at least a monthly meeting where they can get together, these various groups, and talk about the struggles with their divorce, their single parents, their being a widower, and others can help them how they got through these situations when it happened to them in their lives. So we're looking to be starting some of these support groups. That's the area that we're moving into. We're trying to really expand the mission. Why? Because that's what a parish in the 21st century in Sioux City, Iowa, we think should be doing. And in fact, if you look around the country, that's what many are doing. So we're trying to expand into those areas and we really can't wait now with the social distancing and the shutdown and so forth. It's not gonna all happen overnight. Even if we were running at full speed, nothing would happen overnight. But we're gonna start to roll some of these out when things get back to normal, whenever that is and whatever that means, I'm not even exactly sure. But you need to be thinking right now and praying more importantly about where do you belong in this big flow chart of the parish? What areas can you help out in? Is it more helping Dennis with the tasks around the building? Or maybe, hopefully, you'll also be able to do some type of ministry to help us in some of these areas that I've mentioned recently. We need your experience and guidance. Other people need your experience and guidance. God is calling you, I'm calling you, and the parish is calling you. 